Hi. Now I've got a question here which you might like to try. It's a follow-up to my earlier tutorial on the equilibrium of a particle under a system of forces. So what we've got here is the following forces act on a particle centered here and if the particle is in equilibrium find P and Q. So you might like to give this a go and just come back when ready and I'll run through uh, the solution. You can check your working against mine. Okay, well, let's see how you got on if you had a go. Well, with questions like this, certainly when we've got more than three forces acting on the particle, what we do is we resolve in two mutually perpendicular directions. And it would seem sensible to resolve horizontally and vertically. So what I'm going to do is resolve to the right first of all. So I'm assuming you're familiar with resolving. If not, you can always go on the website and find the tutorials on resolving forces. But essentially, if we resolve to the right then, what we've got, if we go around the forces, you can see that all of the nine newtons acts to the right. So that's going to be 9 plus 9 because we're going in the positive sense here to the right. If we take the 7 newton force then because the 7 newtons is inclined to this horizontal direction here we have to split it into two components one to the right and one upwards. The one upwards would have no effect because it's perpendicular to the direction that we're resolving. We're only interested in the component to the right. And because it includes the angle of 40 degrees in this 90 degree angle, then it's going to be cosine. Remember, it's always cosine when you include an angle. So that would be plus 7 cosine, or cos for short, of 40 degrees. As for the P force, well that acts perpendicularly to the direction that we're resolving in. So we can neglect this, it won't have any effect. Now we come on to the final force, the Q here. Now because it's not on the dotted line here, we have to split it into two components. And the components of Q would be one to the left and one downwards. The one downwards has no effect because it will be perpendicular to the direction, but the one along the dotted line here to the left would be Q cos 20 degrees because it contains the angle between the force and the direction we want to resolve in. So that's going to act in the negative sense here, so that would be minus Q cos of 20 degrees. And this is the resultant force acting on our particle here but it's in equilibrium, so that resultant would be equal to zero. So all we need to do is rearrange this now to make Q the subject. So if you add Q cos 20 to both sides and then divide by cos 20, you'll end up with Q equaling 9 plus 7 cos 40 degrees, and that's all divided by cos of 20 degrees. And if you work that out in your calculator, you should find you get 15.284, and so on. And if we give this to a suitable degree of accuracy, let's say one decimal place, then that would be 15.3 newtons to 1 dp. Alright, so that gives us Q. Now, as for P, we need to resolve in the perpendicular direction to this. That can either be up or down. It's up to you. I'm going to resolve upwards. So if we resolve upwards, upwards being positive, then we can see that all of P acts upwards. So we'll start with that force, P. When it comes to 7 newtons, though, we need to split this into two components because it doesn't lie on this dotted line here. If you split it into two components, we said earlier it would be one to the right and one upwards. The one to the right, though, won't have any effect because it's perpendicular to this direction. We're only concerned with the 
upward component of the 7 newtons. So in this angle here of 90 degrees, this part doesn't contain the 40 degrees, so it's going to be 7 sine 40 degrees. You could say it was 50 degrees and go 7 cos 50 degrees, but as I've said earlier in other tutorials, I always prefer to use the angle I'm given. So it's 7 sine 40 degrees, and it'd be positive. OK, so we've got 7 sine 40 degrees. Now as for the 9 newtons, this force acts perpendicularly to this direction, so we don't need to worry about that one. It'll have no effect. That leaves us just now with the Q, and Q can be split into two components, one to the left and one downwards. The one to the left has no effect because it's perpendicular to the direction. We're only concerned with the one downwards. And in this 90 degree angle, this excludes the 20 degrees, so it must be Q sine 20 degrees. Or you could say Q cos 70 degrees, up to you. But I'm going to go for the 20, and so it will be minus, because it acts downwards in the opposite sense to this, Q sine 20 degrees. And this is the resultant force acting on the particle in the vertical sense here. So it equals zero because it's in equilibrium. Now we already know Q if we use this unrounded value here, substitute it into here, we can get P. So by rearranging this equation we have that P equals Q sine 20 minus the 7 sine 40. So in place of Q then I'll just write 15.284 and so on and that's being multiplied by the sine of 20 degrees, and then we've got minus 7 sine 40. And if you work that out in your calculator, you'll end up with 0 0.7279 and so on. So that means that P, if we give it to one decimal place, is going to be 0 0.7 newtons then to 1 dP. All right. So I hope you managed to get that one. If not, then I hope that this tutorial has at least given you some idea then how to tackle problems of this nature. Okay, well that brings us then to the end of this particular example.